Alexander Rusik outboxes Tyson Fury by split decision, becoming the first undisputed heavyweight champion since the year 2000, since Lennox Lewis had it at that time. This was a classic, beautiful, stylistic boxing match, as expected. I thought this was going to be a great fight. I thought this was going to be a 50-50 fight, and it was that. I had the scorecard for me personally, 114-113 for Alexander Usyk winning the fight. I could see a case for Tyson Fury winning the fight, so I wasn't mad that it was a split decision. Did feel like it was going to be a close fight, and it was. And Usyk also had a 115-112 scorecard in his favor. The fight was a great one. Uh, started out Tyson Fury establishing his jab early. It was a busy jab early on, uh, landing uppercuts to the body, body shots in general to Alexander Usyk, investing in the body very early and very often. Alexander Usyk was countering, trying to apply smart pressure and some level changes, landing looping left hands as well, which was something that was a little surprising. He had success uh, on volume with those left hands. Tyson Fury had more volume early on. Um, I had Tyson Fury ahead five rounds to three by the time round eight uh, was done. Then we get to round nine and Alexander Usyk scores a knockdown. And Usyk scores a knockdown. It's the eighth time Tyson Fury has been down in his career. Uh, some people think it could have been a stoppage right then and there. I think there's a strong case for that. And then Usyk sort of takes the fight over from there and wins. Um, and it looks like we might be headed toward a rematch later this year, potentially October. That's something that was floated around. Um, for me and for a lot of people, uh, this brings up a pound for pound conversation. And I think it's very difficult to put Alexander Usyk at number one or number two because of the body of work and how dominant now you're in a way and Terrence Crawford are right now. If you have Alexander Usyk winning this fight and then becoming pound for pound number two or number one, I can't really dispute you in a vehement way, but I disagree. I think because it was a split decision, because Terrence Crawford has been very dominant, as has now you in a way, despite being knocked down by Lewis Neary last time, both of those guys, like you can't really justify moving them down. The one case you probably do have is the activity. Alexander Usyk has been more active than Terrence Crawford. So has now you in a way, Terrence Crawford has not fought more than one time since 2019. Um, that's an issue. And he's going to fight again in August. It looks like that'll be the only time we see him this year again. But I ultimately think that Usyk probably stays at number three for me on the pound for pound list, but it feels wrong not moving Usyk up after this fight and this performance. But at the end of the day, it was a close fight. At least for me, it was a close fight. Again, 114, 113 on my card and other people had it uh, in a similar fashion. So I do think that if he scores the knockout over Tyson Fury in round nine, maybe we're having a different conversation. But as far as pound for pound goes, that's where he is for me. Um, but feel free to disagree. Comment. Just don't be a dick about it. And then we have uh, other fights in the heavyweight division that could be made around this one. Like we're probably headed toward a rematch here. What happens with Anthony Joshua? What happens with Deontay Wilder, Zelay Zhang, the winner of that? What's going to happen there? Are they going to get into the fold here? Uh, Frank Sanchez lost to Ajit Kabayel, um in surprising fashion via knockout. He's somebody who could get in the mix here. Jared Anderson is the hot upcoming prospect who looks like he could be a real contender. What's he going to do? Richard Torres Jr. fights Brandon Moore in a battle of undefeateds tonight as of the time this is being recorded. What's going to happen there? And then you also have Philip Hergovich and others sort of hanging around. Andy Ruiz is going to come back soon. Like there's a lot of interesting fights you can make in the heavyweight division. So I do think that we're, we're not necessarily in a golden era of heavyweight boxing, but we're at a very interesting time in heavyweight boxing for sure. Um, hopefully Anthony Joshua stays active and gets a fight in the meantime, because I do think that he should fight Tyson Fury at some point. I would have favored Deontay Wilder against Alexander Usyk, but I think a lot of people will be captivated by that matchup because you just never know if there's anybody in boxing you give a puncher's chance to. It's Deontay Wilder, but it's a great time in the heavyweight division right now. Uh, after this fight, Alexander Usyk gets his rifle victory. I'm glad we're not crying about robbery after it. And uh, that was excellent. Just excellent boxing. One of the fights of the year from a stylistic standpoint from just a, a technical standpoint. It was really fun to watch and hopefully the rematch uh, delivers as well. So we have for today, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have more stuff coming like this and bigger and better very soon. We're just working out some kinks here and just getting some consistent content out. So subscribe, follow, do all those things and donate. Even if you want to do that, take care and have a good one.